Welcome to Bethany UMC, where we're leading people to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in his image. My name is Thomas. I'm one of the pastors at Bethany. I'm excited that you're joining us for worship today. This is our contemplative Tizay style worship service. Uh, in this service, we have a number of ways of worshiping God. What We will sing some songs together. Uh, we will have some times of prayer and scripture reading. We will also have some moments of silence, and those are there so that we can hear from God during this time. Uh, as as we get started worshiping, I'll remind you just to, to check our website. There's a place on our website for you to check in and register your attendance. You can also give online. You can submit prayer requests online. And we have a whole page dedicated to helping you stay connected to our church during this time. And now as we begin this time of worship, will you pray with me? Lord, we have come here today to worship you. We are ready to encounter your Holy Spirit. So come pour yourself out for us right now. We know that you are present right here with us, wherever we are sitting right now. We pray, God, that you would open up our hearts, that you would open up our lives, that you would come and be at work in us, during this time of worship. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today comes from Psalm 138, verses 1 through 6. This first reading will be a Lectio Divina. Uh, so we'll, I'll read it three different times. Each time I'll ask a question for you to consider as you meditate on this scripture. The first time as we read it through, um, I encourage you to pay attention to just what word or phrase is God using to speak to you today. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. 
For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. What word or phrase is God using to speak to you today? As we read this passage a second time, consider what is God saying to you through that word or phrase? I give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. What is God saying to you through this word or phrase today? As we read this passage a third time, consider how is God calling you to respond to his word? I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. How is God calling you to respond to this word today? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us go to God together in prayer. Lord, we come into your presence this morning, and we are in need of your grace. There's many things going on in our lives that need your attention. Would you come and calm down the swirling and the chaos? Would you come and turn the volume down in our minds so that we can stop being distracted by all of the things going on and help us to focus our attention on you right now? Give us the patience to sit with you and to enjoy the peace that you give us. God, we give you thanks today. Because even with all that is going on, we have so much to be thankful for. God, you are our provider who has provided for us abundantly and given us more than enough. God, you are our protector, the one who keeps us safe. God, you are our comfort. You come even in the darkest of times to be with us and to give us uh, a peace that transcends understanding. God, you give us new grace each day. There's nothing we could do that makes it impossible for us to come back to you, God. There's no sin so great that you uh, leave us forever, but you continue to pour your mercy and grace on us and invite us to come back to you each day. And so, God, here we are. We give you praise and thanks for all uh, that you are, for who you are, God, and for all of the ways that you have been at work in our lives. God, we also lift up our struggles to you. God, the places where our lives feel out of control, God, we, we hand those to you and we ask, God, would you come into those parts of our lives? God, for the friends and family members who we are hurting for, we lift those loved ones up to you and we say, God, come and heal, come and provide, come and be with those who need you so much right now. God, for the world around us and the many ways that it seems to continue to be filled with chaos and brokenness, We ask that you would come, God, and redeem this world back to its original goodness, the way that you created it to be. And God, we lift up your church, and we're glad we're a part of it. And we ask that you would come and use your church to do that redeeming work in the world, to proclaim the good news, to be a part of reconciling relationships, bridging divides, bringing your truth into the world and your love into the world. God, we ask for all of these things because we know that you are the one who can make this possible. You are the one that is great enough, that is powerful enough, and we're confident that you love us and you care about us. We lift up Uh, all the prayers today, the ones that are spoken out loud and the ones that we uh, still have lingering in our hearts, you know those too. And we ask that you would come and respond, God. Come and hear our prayers and move. We ask this using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture reading for today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And it's just a short little scripture. Um, you may have heard it before. Right now, I'm going to read that scripture, and then I'm going to invite you to meditate on it. I'll have some questions to ask, some uh, comments and suggestions, but my hope is that we could hear from God in his word uh, I very much believe that God wants to speak to each of us. So open yourself up, prepare yourself to hear God speaking in his word to you today. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says this. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I wonder, how does this scripture sound when you hear it? Are you encouraged? Yes, I want to live like this. Are you confused? Maybe you're wondering, how could anyone actually live like this? Or maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you're thinking, it's never going to be possible for me to be obedient to this, so I'm just a failure. I think God wants to encourage you in this. And so I want to read it one more time and just invite you to consider, you know, where is your heart in relation to this scripture, and, and then to, to give that over to God. So hear this scripture one more time. Consider, where is your heart? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you.
consider for a moment how does this command push up against the ways that you tend to go through life? Is God calling you to be more joyful? Or maybe God's calling you to be more prayerful? Or maybe God is speaking more loudly in the thankfulness part, wanting you to be more thankful. But maybe it's not one of these actions at all that God is speaking to you about most. Maybe instead of one of these three things, it's just the general unending and constant nature of practicing these actions. The scripture seems to have a picture of someone who continuously delights in God as a way of life. Rejoicing and celebrating who God is, drawing close to God in prayer, showing thankfulness for God's mighty works in our lives and in the world. And these things are constant. You can't check them off a list. You don't graduate from one of these commands. It's more of a way of life, a state of one's heart as they go through all of life. Consider for a moment, what would it look like for you to live out this scripture as a way of life? I want to encourage you today that all of this is possible for us because God has given us his grace in Jesus Christ. God has given us the Holy Spirit to allow us to be formed into the image of God in this life. So will you ask God to form you into a person that lives by this scripture? Wherever it is you feel the most need to grow in, wherever it is this rubs up against your life the most, invite God to come and to make that true through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read this verse one more time, and then I'll just let you rest uh, in that reflecting on God's word for you today. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you.
I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. I hope this was a good time for you to draw near to God, to hear from God, spending time in silence and in scripture, uh, and to praise God and just let uh, that excitement about who God is stir up to natural praise and thankfulness. Uh, we have much to be thankful for, and so as we go through the rest of this season, I invite you to consider practicing thankfulness in a always way of life kind of way. As you go from here, go in the love of God our Father, go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and go in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.